Hi, well, um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Barnaby Page. I'm the editor of ScreenMediaMag.com. And um, like most editors who write about technology, I'm very bad with it. So please excuse me if I get anything wrong um, in moving the slides forward here. Um, I'm going to be speaking very briefly today about digital signage. Um, this is a signage show. There's a great deal of digital technology here in terms of digital print. Um, but the logical next step from that, for many of us, will be digital signage itself. And so that raises the obvious question, what is digital signage? Oh, oh no. Well, I could um, impose quite a lot of jargon on you and call it, so I'll have to take a deep breath here, the cross-platform, omni-channel, interactive, digital, customer-facing, place-based, pixel-centric communications paradigm 2.0. Um, and then you can see below a load of other buzzwords that are frequently applied to digital signage. Or I could take a somewhat simpler approach and simply chuck all those buzzwords away and cut down to the basics. Cut down to the basics, if I can move the slide on. And say digital signage is the use of screens as signs. Um, and by screens there, I mean essentially commercial grade television sets. Um, is, re is really what you're talking about, although obviously many, many of them in larger formats or smaller formats. Um, but it's, it's the same screen you have in the corner of your sitting room or on your desktop PC, nothing special about it. Um, so what I'm going to briefly take you through today are some of the major trends in digital signage, some of the things to watch out for if you're thinking of moving into that area. Um, it's quite interesting looking around the show today Though there's not a lot of exhibitors specifically offering digital signage services or products themselves, there's actually quite a lot of digital signage in use demonstrating print products and print technologies. Um, so you're, so you, it's, uh, it's actually come home to roost here in the heart of the print world, as it were. Right, I'm, I'll quickly run through these and then I'll go into each one in a little more detail. Um, probably the biggest trend that has dominated digital signage in the last... I don't know, at least four or five years, maybe more, is that it's becoming interactive. And we'll see in a minute exactly how that has happened. It's also, I did say I'd throw away the buzzwords, but I couldn't resist getting one in here. It's becoming cross-platform. Um, and I know that is a term that's frequently used um, to the point that it's rather meaningless, but it does have some relevance here. It's becoming data-driven. That's, um, I think, a really important new innovation and one we're going to see a lot more of over the next few years. Um, that's one way in which digital signage differs very, very crucially from conventional printed signage, whether that's printed by a digital method or not. It can actually be based on live, real-time data. We're seeing a lot of display innovations. Those will be nothing new to people here, of course. Um, but these are innovations in the shape, size, resolution, etc., of screens. Um, this one may puzzle some of you. We're seeing a long tail and a cloud, and I wouldn't blame you if you said A. Um, but again, those two buzzwords do have some relevance here. We'll get to them. And finally, probably the least easy thing to talk about, but the easiest thing to see if you go out and walk around the show floor, is creativity. We're seeing a lot of real creativity now in the digital signage space. So I'll, I'll just run through each of those in a little more detail. Interaction. Well, interaction has been around in digital signage for a long time. Um, probably started at least 10 years ago, then in a very crude way, usually using SMS text messaging to communicate in some way with a sign or Bluetooth, um, perhaps to register your name and email address with a sign and then receive a shopping coupon back or something. Um, Today, with the ubiquity of smartphones, that um, interactivity is becoming much more seamless. Um, of course, it's not only with the individual's own device. It can also be done in the way very familiar to all of us, through touchscreens or kiosks. A, a kiosk is basically a touchscreen with a, with a housing around it. Um, increasingly, in retail environments, you can get the best of both worlds by using not the smartphone or the kiosk, but by using a tablet. And you can see that almost as a kind of, a kind of portable kiosk. So you're getting a full-on computing experience, but something you can carry around. So those are the kinds of interaction that are being used. As I say, interaction in itself is nothing very new in digital signage. 
What is new, to be honest, is that it's being done well now. It's giving the consumer a real benefit so that they can log on to your digital sign in some way and gain something back from it, which of course encourages them to do that and begins to build a relationship with them. Oh, I told you I wasn't very good at this. If we move on to um, cross-platform, this is kind of the other half of interactivity. Um, digital signage increasingly is seen as part of a wide variety of ways in which a consumer can encounter a business or a brand. So it's not just a standalone screen in the corner. Um, so for example, you may tie in your digital signage product with um, an app that people can use on their phones. Um, a common uh, sort of buzz phrase these days is mobile first. But that's the first way people encounter you is on their phone. Um, then you can move, perhaps move their attention to the bigger screen. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of um, integration with social media as well, uh, particularly with Facebook and Twitter, of course. A typical one, for example, is people in a bar or pub might post something to Twitter using a hashtag about their experience there or the band they're listening to or whatever. And then that, those Twitter tweets will appear on a large digital sign. Then, of course, and this is, this is a very relevant one to sign makers who are moving into... Oh, was that me? No. I might take this opportunity to tell you how screen technology is really seamless, um, works 24-7 with no downtime. Right. Let's see where we get back to. Right, we're back where we were. Yeah, I was talking about advertising media, and this is obviously a very relevant one to people who are working in, as it were, non-digital signage, in printed signage. Um, increasingly, digital signage campaigns, whether those are conventional outdoor advertising campaigns or whether they're perhaps point-of-sale marketing, they're being very much better integrated with the non-screen non elements. So you can see, for example, your printed POS material and your screen POS call to action. Um, done with very much the same creative toward the same ends. I'll finally just mention this um, phrase you see quite a lot, the fourth screen, the fifth screen, the sixth screen. We live in an age where people have access to more and more screens, their television, their laptop, their desktop computer if they have one, their tablet, their Kindle, of course their phone. Um, some people will say there's four, some will say there's five, but digital signage increasingly is becoming another one of those screens. And so the experience that people have with the public screen in the corner of the restaurant or by the checkout in the store is integrated with what they see on those other screens. I'll talk a bit about data. Um, as I say, this is perhaps one of the most exciting things in digital signage. It's one of the least visible um, to the consumer because they're simply seeing a message on a sign. But that message can be driven and changed in real time by data that's coming, into, that's coming into the signage system. Now that could be data about the business. An example there would be if you're a restaurant or a store and for some reason you want to sell some product quickly, perhaps it's near an expiry date, you can automatically um, start advertising that on your digital signage when your stock control system indicates that the time is right for that. It could be data about the location. Um, something you know, as simple as what is the weather like. It could be, again, data about external factors. The weather is another classic example. Of course, it can be data about the customer. Um, this has been quite a controversial aspect of digital signage, but it's one that's undoubtedly growing. Um, the recognition of customer gender and age, for example, through facial recognition, or now the tracking of customers within premises, within a store, for example, using things like eye beacons. Um, so you can tie all those together and you can get a pretty good idea of exactly who you're targeting a message to, in what business, at what moment, and what is the most appropriate message to generate the kind of action you want. Finally here I mentioned the Internet of Things, um, a familiar concept I'm sure to many of you. Um, more and more devices from refrigerators on upwards are becoming connected to the Internet and that will enable them to send data to digital signage. Oh. Display innovations, um, you see these all around and it's quite simple. 
we're moving beyond the conventional kind of 16-9 screen shape. You're getting very big displays, huge video walls. You're also getting tiny shelf edge displays. There's some quite nice ones over there at a stand called Quick Stand. Um, you're getting screens built into more different shapes um, so that they don't have to be rectangular. You're getting transparent screens. You're getting the new high definition technologies. Um, and some people would say you're getting 3D. I think it has to be said that satisfactory digital signage 3D is not really there for every application yet. But in certain environments, particularly on a small scale, you can perhaps do it. Let's probably try again. The long tail and the cloud, well, um, you're probably familiar with both these concepts, in fact, but they just rarely go together. The long tail, of course, is the theory that in any market, you have a few big customers and then lots and lots of little customers. Um, and that's proving to be true in digital signage as well. And what we're seeing to serve those lots and lots of little customers, by which I mean people who may have a screen network of 10 or 15 screens, is relatively cheap, low cost of entry, easy to use digital signage packages. Um, Janssen over there have, are showing one for one land, for instance, very good package. Um, these are frequently cloud-based, in other words, they're software as a service. So you just log onto the internet and use them and frequently come with pre-packaged content as well. Oh, one more to go, I think, if I can get it. Oh. And finally, creativity. Um, as I say, difficult to talk about creativity without showing it, but if you look around, you'll see plenty. Um, people are getting more creative and they're making their digital signage content more appropriate to the medium. They're getting the duration right. You can rarely count on people seeing digital signage for more than a few seconds, unless they're in a situation like a queue. Um, they're getting the viewing distance right. Some screens you might see from 40, 50 feet away. Others you'll see that close. Um, and all this, I think, adds up to it being the end of novelty value. It's no longer enough just to have a screen. You have to show something that's worthwhile to the business and the consumer. And so I'll close up by saying, um, what do I think are the most important elements there? Well, I think they're those four. They're the interactivity and the cross-platform, which kind of go together. They're the data and the creativity. And that's me. I'm Barnaby Page. I'm the editor of ScreenMediaMag.com, which is a, a weekly website and email news service covering the digital signage world. We also have a printed magazine, um, which you can register to receive. I'll, I'll just have one piece of housekeeping before I go. Um, due to an unexpected childbirth, we've had to cancel the three o'clock Ask the Expert session today. I hasten to add it wasn't actually one of the experts who was being born, um, but uh, the, the spouse of the, of the chairperson. Um, however, those panels will continue every other day um, as scheduled. And in fact, I'll be chairing one on Wednesday, so hopefully see some of you then. And if you have any questions, either pitch them at me now or catch me on Wednesday. Thank you.